Welcome champions to more IC for you. But this time we're not covering any champions directly. Rather a very important mechanic for mid to late game players. Trials of Mount Tiamat and forging legendary equipment. I'm covering this now, well technically I covered it in my overview a little bit, because a huge change has come to how this works. And it's for the better for everyone, at least in my opinion. So let's dive in. First off, let me explain what Trials of Mount Tiamat is. The closest thing this game has to a multiplayer feature. You will work together with up to four other players to collectively work toward taking down Tiamat over the course of a week. You unlock the ability to run the trial once you complete the adventure, El Torel's Last Stand, in the Descent into Avernus campaign. This is the last adventure of the campaign, so just work your way through. It's only the base adventure that needs to be completed, so no need to worry about its variants. You can then join a forming group or form one yourself with the in-game group finding system. Though you'll also see a joinable code you can give away, either to friends or if you join the Discord and go to the Looking for Group channel there. Keep in mind the champion you assign will be locked out of personal use for the duration of the trial. And yes, that even means for other campaigns, events, and time gates. And once you lock yourself in with a group and it starts, you cannot leave. You're with that group until you succeed or fail for the week. However, the champion you choose will give a buff to the group while the trial is up, each champion falling under a certain category for what buff they give. The possibilities are as follows. Increased all champion damage, increased max health, increased gold find, increased enemy spawn speed, increased assault party damage, which refers to the DPS you deal to Tiamat, Increased receives scales of Tiamat, a currency earned from trials used to forge legendary gear, which I'll cover in a second. Reduced base attack cooldown, reduced all damage received, and reduced ultimate cooldown. By far, and I mean by far, the two most important are assault party damage and increased received scales of Tiamat. The most common champions used for those being Jarlaxle for Assault, which caps at 200%, and Makos for Scales at 100%. Now, does this mean you should instantly choose one of those two champions for your group? No. I've seen runs crippled because someone instantly locked Jarlaxle with a very low Assault party damage and ruined it for the rest of the group, or someone else in the party likely had a better Jarlaxle to use in place of that one. How much they offer is based on that champion's overall item level. So if you have rather low gear levels on these champions, you should actually steer away from locking them, so someone else can cover these important roles. If you're ever worried about who you should lock in in this case, champion damage is always a good basic option. Bruner, Calliope, and Tyrol will likely be good options. But if you have a way to communicate with your group, like if you joined through Discord, Asking your group what they want you to cover is your best bet. Each member will contribute to an overall damage per second in whittling down the massive health of Tiamat. This DPS is calculated based on your highest bud achieved that week in the Trials Adventures, and then further increased by completing the adventure once a day, each day adding on a restriction to your formation. The later the day, the harsher the restriction and each restriction lingering for the entire week. So the longer you go, the harder it is. And keep in mind, these are random. So just because you have a certain set of restrictions, that doesn't mean it's the same ones your fellow trial group members are facing. It is important to reach your highest bud as soon as you can once the trials start, so your DPS will get going right away. And of course, finishing that first adventure as fast as you can as well. There are 10 total difficulties, and you're forced to climb your way up them. Your first time will have to start on normal, and each time you are victorious in a difficulty, you will be able to challenge the next. Each week's victory brings you an allotted amount of Scales of Tiamat, and Glory of Bahamut chests. These chests contain scrolls that can be used to give your weekly group more buffs, such as damage, gold find, assault party damage, and blood vials a currency that allows you to enter the higher difficulties that you'll have to spend to enter them. These days you shouldn't have to worry too much about having enough blood vials, 
It was fairly recently reworked to where this is almost a redundant currency, and we really don't even need it in the game anymore, to be perfectly honest. While it is clearly ideal, you want to take Tiamat down. Should you fail, you will still be rewarded based on how far you were able to get her health down. The difficulty will affect what level you have to complete in your daily adventure and the overall health of Tiamat, but it will increase the scales and chests earned. The scales are very important because they are used in legendary crafting, which will transition into now. Crafting legendaries is a vital part of growing your power in the mid to late game. As I said earlier, a big reason I'm doing this video now is that this system was reworked a few days ago, and in my opinion, in a positive way. It doesn't matter if you were deep into legendary crafting or just starting out, it's been rebalanced to suit both. As I said before, the scales are a currency used to craft a legendary. So what is a legendary? A unique rarity you craft onto a piece of epic gear equipped on a champion. You will be shown a list of six possibilities for an affix to add onto the equipment, which is chosen randomly when you craft. This does not affect the gear in any other way other than adding that specific affix. Once you've added an affix, you have a couple of options. You can re-roll it to try to get a different one of the affixes, or you can increase the level of it to increase the potency of the affix. All of these actions require you to spend scales. And this is where the big change has come into play. It used to be all of your actions increased the amount of scales you had to spend, and then that cost would dwindle down over time. So you were forced to either wait or spend lots of scales. Well, that has been changed, and those who spent in the past were refunded scales. So all of that overinflation from the scaling was given back within reason. So you could redistribute that power you had built up. But that also means if you're just starting new, it will take far less time to ramp up your power with these lower fixed costs for crafting and upgrading your legendaries. Do note, however, reforging for a new affix still has a scaling cost that goes up every time you re-roll and will slowly go down over time. You'll want to pace yourself on re-rolls and focus first on crafting as many legendaries on your main used champions as possible and upgrading the ones that benefit your formation. The current costs are as follows on this chart provided by CNE. So another question becomes, what affix should you go for? Every affix involves increasing your damage in one way or the other, so the variety comes in how much and who or what it affects. These vary from all champions to gender to race to ability scores or alignment, and in general something that is more specific like race or alignment will offer a bit more of a percentage buff. And every champion is different for what six affixes they have. We'll use Zorbu as an example here. He has options between all champions for the lowest amount at 100%, males at 125, gnomes at 150, champions with a wisdom of 11 or higher for 100, good champions at 150, and then all champions by 30% for each champion slotted with a constitution score of 13 or higher in your formation. There is no limit on how many of the same affix can be on different pieces of gear. You can roll all six equipment slots with gnome damage, or they could be spread between all six varieties. So what should you go for? Well, that depends a little on what you're looking to get out of legendaries. If you're looking for the best flat raw damage buff for a particular formation, you might want to look for something like this scaling 30%. Lower up front, but for example, in my case, every champion I slot in my standard Artemis formation does have a con of 13 or higher. Now, while all legendaries separately will increase your damage multiplicatively, something like this is additive with itself. So with 10 slotted champions, we're talking 300%. The highest value Zorbu offers with his legendaries, but only because I could reach that full 10 stack. Now if I only had two champions with a con of 13 or higher, clearly I would want to avoid that in favor of something else, as that would only be a 60% increase. But then you have someone like Torogar, who has a race based buff for each minotaur in the group, but he's the only minotaur in the game. However, it's for a flat 300% by itself. The same as Zorbu's scaling con with full 10 champions. 
so this is by far his best option, as he'll always be slotted in a formation while you are using him. Always keep your eye out on those options and what will give you the biggest percent increase. But if you're looking for the broadest buff because you like to change up your formation a lot, you might want to sacrifice a little bit of the damage in favor of the more common increases, like all champion or ability scores. Really, when you're just starting out, you're going to take what you can get since rerolls will be scarce. But be mindful of your formation and what will be the best fit in your own circumstance. In my case, because of the rework and refunding scales, I was able to get all of my 10 slotted formations legendaries to benefit my DPS and scale them up to at least roughly 2e5% each when averaged out. That means 10 champions with 6 equipment, so 60 applications of a multiplicative 2e5%. That means a total of 1.18e200%. That's a lot of damage. That is straight up not that far behind what my entire formation is giving my DPS with formation abilities, simply from legendaries alone. They have all been upgraded only to roughly 11 to 13 out of a hard cap of 20, so I even still have a lot of room to grow if I cared to. But let's go over upgrading legendaries, as that is where a lot of the oomph comes from. They have a static numerical cost now, according to the chart they provided here. But one of the big things about upgrading legendaries is it will cost some favor as well, reducing it by an entire exponent. Which campaign favor depends on the equipment, as shown here. So if you're getting ready for an upgrade frenzy, be damn sure you have a good gold farm ready to pump those favors right back up. In my case, getting everything to the levels they are. That means I've lost somewhere in the realm of 660 favor exponents in this process. At the end of the day, I think it's a very positive change what they've done with the system. Not just because I got a power spike from being a longtime player, but because it opens up new players to an easier, more streamlined way of gaining power from legendaries. That is also more friendly to those who like to spread out their legendaries, instead of hard focusing on one formation. In essence, everyone wins. And to those of you out there who find the Trials of Tiamat intimidating, don't. Even if all you have to run is normal, get to it. Because crafting these legendaries is quite important for you to grow your power. Don't be afraid of Tiamat. Thanks for spending your time here today. Upgrade that like sub and bell for me. Leave a comment on what you think about this new system. And how you're planning to use your scales. Stay tuned because I'm always working on the next one. Have a hell of a time out there, champions.